Imagine waking up one morning to find the night sky different. The stars seem stretched. The moon is gone. And somewhere far beyond our solar system, a black shadow begins to move. It isn't just another planet. It's a black hole, invisible, massive, and hungry, drifting straight toward us. At first, no one would notice. Black holes don't glow. They don't make noise. They reveal themselves only through what they destroy. But the closer it comes, the more everything starts to unravel. Astronomers would be the first to see it. Distant starlight bending, light flickering behind something unseen. At first, they'd think it's a lensing effect, a cosmic trick of gravity. Then the math would confirm the impossible. A black hole is approaching, and Earth's orbit will cross its path. Most of us wouldn't understand what that means, not at first. We've seen movies. We imagine a swirling vortex sucking everything in. But the truth is far stranger. Black holes don't suck. They pull through gravity just like the sun does, only far stronger. If you replace the sun with a black hole of the same mass, Earth would keep orbiting just as it does now. It wouldn't even notice until it got too close. But our story isn't that safe. This black hole is heavier than the sun, millions of times heavier. A supermassive nomad drifting through the Milky Way after being flung from its home galaxy. And we're in its way. As it approaches, the first thing we'd feel is not darkness, but distortion. The moon's orbit would stretch. Tides would grow unpredictable. Earth's rotation might slow by milliseconds each day. The gravity of the black hole would begin tugging on the planet long before contact. You'd see strange things in the sky. Stars bending, light curving, colors stretching into halos. Even without touching us, the black hole's gravity would warp space itself. It would look like the universe was folding in on us. Satellites would start to fail. GPS, communications, even the International Space Station would drift out of position. The sun would appear slightly dimmer, not because it's fading, but because space itself is bending between us and it. Governments would panic quietly. Space agencies would know there's no stopping it. No rocket can escape gravity that strong. There's nowhere to go, no bunker deep enough. Then the black hole's pull begins to win. Earth leaves its orbit around the sun. We'd feel it as endless twilight, a colder, longer day, the sun hanging still in the same part of the sky. Our seasons break. Weather collapses. Within weeks, Earth drifts into deep space. The oceans freeze over. The atmosphere begins to crystallize. Yet above that frozen silence, the black hole shines brighter than any star, not by emitting light, but by bending it. As Earth moves closer, time itself begins to stretch. For every second that passes on our clocks, hours could pass for the rest of the universe. If aliens were watching from far away, they'd see Earth moving slower and slower, a planet caught in the web of gravity's strongest trap. From the ground, gravity begins to misbehave. You'd feel heavier on one side of the planet than the other. Objects fall sideways. Mountains begin to shift. The black hole's pull is tearing Earth apart, a process scientists call spaghettification. It sounds silly, but it's real. The closer something gets to a black hole, the greater the difference in gravity between its near side and far side. Your head might be pulled slightly less than your feet, and that difference stretches you thinner and thinner. The same happens to the planet. The crust cracks. The oceans tear from their basins, drawn upward into a thin stream of vapor and debris. Earth's atmosphere ignites from friction as it spirals inward. Then comes the final phase, the event horizon. The boundary where not even light can escape. Once Earth crosses that line, everything, land, ocean, and sky, ceases to exist in the way we understand. To an outside observer, Earth would appear frozen at the edge, never quite falling in. Its image would stretch, fade, and redshift into darkness. Inside, time would move normally for a moment, and then stop altogether. What happens beyond that line is one of physics' greatest mysteries. Inside a black hole, space and time trade places. 
Falling inward is like falling forward in time, unstoppable, inevitable, and irreversible. No atom, no light, no information can come back out. At the center lies the singularity, a point of infinite density and zero volume where the known laws of physics collapse. Every piece of matter, every mountain, every human story compresses into an unimaginably small dot in space-time. But here's the strange part. Black holes aren't forever. Stephen Hawking proposed that they slowly evaporate, releasing faint radiation over billions of years. If that's true, then one day, far in the future, the energy that once was Earth might re-emerge, not as a planet, but as a whisper of heat in the darkness. So what would it feel like for us inside that final second? As gravity intensifies, time slows near your feet compared to your head. Your body becomes a clock ticking at different speeds. From your point of view, the fall seems endless. From the universe's point of view, it ends almost instantly. It's haunting, isn't it? We live our entire lives under gravity's gentle touch, never realizing that it's also the universe's greatest predator. Every star, every galaxy, and even time itself can be consumed by it. Yet, without black holes, the universe wouldn't look the way it does. They anchor galaxies, shape stars, and help spread heavy elements that make planets possible. In a way, we owe our existence to the same thing that could destroy us. So what if the Earth really did fall into a black hole? We'd vanish, yes. But our atoms, our energy, our tiny mark on the cosmos wouldn't be gone forever. They'd just become part of something bigger, something older than time itself. Every ending, even one that happens at the edge of a black hole, is just a transformation. A story rewritten in the language of gravity. And maybe that's the most human part of it all, that even in the face of cosmic oblivion, we still ask, what if?